It is I, Raposa, o grande, o melhor, o campeão. It is I that slices the ball. Ladies and gentlemen, start your eardrums. This is the show with the man, the myth, the most amazing person that ever spoke, aside from me, John Rambo. Woo! Uh, Woo! I, I think this announcement thing is getting Woo! a little bit to my head here. <laughs> what was with the complimentary intro? You want something from me? What's going on? Uh, I'm good. Oops. You help. You might help moving a large piece of furniture or something. What's going on here? If that were the case, I'd have invited you to my parents' house. I hope you don't want any money because I have none to share. <laughs> you, have, you want. You want something? No, but that is pretty funny that you remind me. Every like, whenever you come to my house, my parents are like, "Oh yeah, invite your friends over. That's cool." <laughs> You'd get there and they'd be like, "Can you help us move this?" Well, I remember that trick. They do it to me too, man. They do it to me I now. That trick. My dad invited me home to go see Zombieland, and instead he's like, no, nah, it's raining. Can you help me lift furniture? <laughs> what? I still haven't seen Zombieland. What's wrong with helping your parents move stuff? They're nice people. Nothing. They're really nice people. I just wish they would... Uh, I mean, there was a time where they weren't upfront about it. But I do, I do remember this. You would invite me over, I'd be like, I don't know. What's going on? I'd, walk, I'd like walk up to the windows, look in, make sure there's nothing. It looked like it needed to be moved. I would come in slowly, you know, leave the door cracked open because I had to run away. Sneak into the exactly. basement when they're not looking. Exactly. So last week on the show, we did an interview. We had Marv Gatai and Riz One on, two of the nah, top nah. eight placers at Evo. Two wonderful gents. Yeah, I was pretty proud of the interview, actually. I felt like it was kind of different than the usual style of interview you get from the fighting game community. You know, no, no one said salty or I'll run it back at all. That, that was not said. <laughs> it's kind of, that's never been done before. And uh, I tried to kind of approach it in like a real serious way, like almost like a, maybe like ESPN would talk to like a, an athlete or something. I don't know. That's how I tried to approach it. I was pitching an NPR but, interview. But uh, a what? NPR interview, like those nice heartfelt interviews they do. Yeah, I guess so. So I found out like what, what drives these guys to play the game what it means to approach the game from a pure standpoint, you know, and um, a few people told me that they really liked the interview. I assume those people were fighting game players. <laughs> yeah. So if you are a fighting game person or a competitive gaming person, you might enjoy it. Uh, and if you missed it, you probably should check that out. I would, I would uh, recommend it, you know. And if you've ever been curious about what it's like to be one of those guys, then it's a good listen. Exactly. And of course I'm going to recommend it because it's my own stuff. And also because you don't hear my voice that much. That'd be kind of messed up if I didn't want to recommend my own things. <laughs> well, you, you were there. What do you mean? You said I was there. I was just more quiet because I was just listening to them and, and just thinking and wondering. Well, this brings me to my next point, actually, because I, I didn't realize we were going that long with that. <laughs> so uh, we probably could have done, was like done the show and then done that interview as like a separate deal you know, for the channel. Yeah. But uh, it is what it is. That's how it turned out. Um, so we, you know, what, like I said, it was very long, so we did not get to do the comments and the, and the questions, which is a staple of the show, and I, I actually felt bad about that. Yeah, but, and, um, and then you made some statements. Without- I made some statements, so what, basically what I said was on Twitter, I said, I apologize that we did not get to the comments and questions. We'll try to make it up to you this week. If we do not make it up to you, OJ will be forced to shave his head. Yeah, that's, the, I never agreed to any such thing. <laughs> you know, well, well, the key word here is forced. No, no, so, no, no, no. When the word forced is used, there's no, no questioning. No, nope, 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 nope. Not going to well, happen. No, OJ? Hmm? Instead of saying no, why don't you try to make it up to the fine people? We're, we're trying to do uh, the comments better and, and harder than we ever have before. And try to make it up. Okay. So we're we're going to rock the comments there's, this time. There's a lot on the line. There's about 30 pounds of hair. That's on the line right now. Oh my gosh, it can't be that much. It's got to be no more than one or two, right? I think it is that much. I, I mean, I know I have a big head, but that's not... Ugh, never mind. 
I was saying we will be doing the comments and the questions guaranteed. You will be joined by the returning Cyber Demon. <laughs> Cyber Demon will be coming back. He's now a staple of the show. Always great to talk to him. Who's the paperclip of the show? Uh, I don't know. And we'll be joined by the great Charles Mooney. Charles Mooney is a gentleman that has been harassing Bob Saget on Twitter. Out of control. <laughs> Sending him tweets, multiple tweets every day. Um, giving Saget two choices. One being a terrible choice, one being join and, and come on the show. I don't know how Saget hasn't banned him yet, but this is what's going on. So I said, why don't you come on and read some of these tweets, these hilarious tweets to the Ram Borgia, and he's going to do that for us today. I bet you he's chuckling. He's like, you know, forget the show. I want to meet this Mooney guy. Yeah, probably, yeah. <laughs> he's like, yeah, maybe. So first thing I want to talk about, we're getting shirt, we're getting those Steve Alsey shirts, right? That we are, sir. So if you saw the footage from Too Many Games, me and OJ were sporting this fabulous, I do mean fabulous, State Ballsy t-shirt, the official logo of the upcoming website. I want to put them up for sale on Monday. I don't know what the date is of Monday, do you know? Uh, Monday would actually be July 23rd. Right, so what I want to do is I'll put them up on Monday. Going to be 20 bucks. All proceeds go towards, you know, helping us out uh, with all our endeavors. Equipment, all that good stuff. Comes with quite expensive. And you get a nice t-shirt back. We send you a t-shirt in, in exchange for $20. Which, which you can wear. So this is an awesome shirt. It's black. It's with the Steve Alsey logo. Like I said, it's the official logo of the upcoming website. We have all different sizes now. Not like before we had like just large and people were upset. <laughs> <laughs> we have everything from small, medium, large, extra large. They are not made from Vistaprint anymore. We actually found a local place, and they do a much more high-quality uh, shirt than, than anything we've ever had before. Is this correct, OJ? I agree with you, yes. Tell us tell us something about the shirts. They are Gildan Heavyweight black shirts. They are very soft, comfortable, and they were folded quite nicely, and I inspected them myself. Okay, I think you just turned everyone off from getting one. What? Why? Well, what did I do? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, it's from a local place. They did a great job. We, we supervised the entire process, make sure it came out correctly. And um, I camped outside their window at night and looked at their equipment. So if you, have, if you want one of those, there's only 30, right? We only got 30? We only got 30. We only got 30. It's a limited edition. Um, I'm hoping we can put out some kind of video on Monday, maybe showing it. And That would be cool. And, uh, you know, again, again, reminding everyone. But that's that. And what, I, what I want to do, I haven't thought of it yet, exactly what we're going to do, but I want to do a contest where someone can win a shirt. That would be pretty sweet. I haven't thought of exactly what we're going to do yet, what the contest is. But I think what we'll do is next week, I will have figured it out by then, hopefully, and then I will tell you what you need to do <laughs> to possibly win a Stay Ballsy t-shirt. Splendid. Yeah, do you have any ideas? Oh, we wouldn't want to give it away now, would we? You have an idea? You don't have to say what it is, but do you, do you have an idea? Nothing concrete. You don't have. You have no idea, do you? Uh, I've got a few <laughs> things floating around my head. All right, so those shirts are pretty cool, man. I'm pretty happy with those. Oh yeah, uh, I, I'm pretty psyched. I mean, I should have bought more so I could wear more wear, wear one. Yeah, we never get. Well, we already have one though. Oh yeah, that's true. That's a good point. You don't need another one. Derp. You got enough stuff. Yeah, my Next closet, shirt. boy. So the Steve Ballsy Intergalactic Video Network is growing once again. It just keeps growing. It's out of control. You know? Is it it's now? Gonna, it's going to poke somebody's eye out so it's so long. It's uh... So we have joining the network this week, youtube.com slash Filipino Gamer. We have YouTube.com slash Gaming Pitbull. Cool Man Junior 88. We have Nero Must Die 1. It's all. Dipset Tab. Dipset Ab. Purple Naruga. Hmm. And uh, the Tone 4L. You know who the Tone 4L is, right? The Tone? The Tone, yeah. The tone, uh, tone 4L is doing a wrestling um, YouTube channel. 
he does all video and he and he goes for the camera and he and he talks about uh, Raw and SmackDown and and all that great stuff. So wow, that is, he's in the network as well. That is awesome. <laughs> so all you guys are now in the network. A lot of confusion this week for people. I got a lot of messages um, asking how do we join? How do I join it? I don't understand how to how do I get into it? This is awesome that people are getting into. It. You just do. You send me a message saying I want, I would like to join. And I inspect your, your page, make sure it's not Nazi porn, right? We talked about this. And as long as it's something like legit and nothing crazy, and you and you mentioned that you're a Steve Ball's Intergalactic Video Network director, perhaps on your channel or in your videos, you are then part of the network, and uh, we will do our best to promote your channel. And on our upcoming StayBallsy.com website, which will be out the first week of August, mm. I will actually be putting your videos or featuring your videos on the website for people to enjoy. So, I tell because a couple of people, were, a couple of people are like, I sent you the, uh, you know, that want to be in it, and you didn't put me up. What's going on? And some people were like upset. <laughs> I haven't rejected anyone, so I'll tell you right now. If you sent it in, and I didn't mention your name, whatever, somehow it, it fell through the cracks, and uh, just please just remind me, send me another message, and uh, I'll definitely take care of it. So. No one get upset. No one go crazy. Okay, it's all good, right? Fear not. Fear not. Do not be afraid. <laughs> so there's a lot, a lot of, a lot of errands today. I'm taking care of right now. I want to talk about the website a little bit. What I did this week, we're still in the construction phase. What I did this week was put up all the songs that people sent in. Oh. For the show. So all those awesome intro songs that you hear are all up there now, and they're free to download nice. once the site comes out. I also have every piece of art that was ever sent in by the Ramborgia is up there. Very, very nice. <laughs> and high quality, so you can go and view it. It's like a like a gallery. You can slide through, and uh, or you know <laughs> even download the, the pictures to your PC or whatever you want to do. So Ramborgian backgrounds for all. It's all again there. Really, what I want to do is. Put out Shinazi Man Hole Punch for number five first. That'll be uh, July 29th. And then the first week of August. You're not going to have wood right there? Maybe. It should be fine. And then the first week of August, what I'm going to do is uh, we launch the site. I'm going to make a video going through the site and showing you how it works and all the stuff that's there and, and all that. And I'll be up on the channel. So. Very nice. Yeah. Talk about Shinazi Man Hole Punch a little bit. What do you have to say? What do I have to say about it? You've been working on it. Yeah, we've been working on it a lot. I'm very happy with the way it's coming out. Uh, we had a few technical problems, which John managed to resolve very well. We've uh, yeah, all kinds of all kinds of strange problems, like the our audio basically is, is was dead. <laughs> yeah. So after a full day, uh, full day of filming, the um, audio was only what was it? it was not stereo. What was going on? It was one it? channel. It was one channel audio, so I had to kind of mess with it. And, I don't know, and our, our light structure broke. Yeah. What happened with that? Is that just the, the bulb, or is that the whole thing? It looks like the bulb broke something on its way down. Like, I tried no, to put another happened, bulb in there, and it wouldn't you know, go. You, you move stuff around, and we actually had a, a totally different location, which we had to drive to, which was a, a, an hour away. Yeah, and, um, I went there straight from work. Yeah, so, I mean, stuff, this is what happens, is the reality of it, stuff breaks down as you... Oh, Yeah. And, you know, we run into the ground, too, so... Yeah, we got a few... Well, I think it's really neat, and you're going to see some interesting locales. Yeah, I'm really wait. excited about the episode as well. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's, it's definitely got a diff bunch of different locales. Uh, I think the script's really good. And you've seen some of it so far. It's probably, like, like a third done, maybe. Yeah, I, I was thoroughly impressed. Takes a long time, man. I feel kind of bags the channel. My channel's been kind of dead the last several weeks. The only thing up on the channel has been the show and Smart Guys. <laughs> mm. but, uh, it's more alive yeah, than... I think we're gearing up for, for some other stuff, you know. And We're preparing. I mean, we got a lot coming up. I mean, Stuff takes a lot of time. It's the editing, the, the filming, and, and even like the like the music is like it just takes a really long time, you know. Oh, yeah. People don't realize. <clears throat> well, to be fair, we have a lot coming up. I mean, think about it. Well, next week, I'm hopefully going to get some stuff because I'm going to Otakon, which is always fun. Then after the, after Otakon, it's uh, we're back, and then after that, I'm going to Gen Con, and then there's New York Comic Con the month after that. I mean, there's all sorts of stuff going on over the next three months. There's a lot of things. Yeah, 
So be ready. Well, yeah, this, this stuff takes a lot of time and it's kind of a bummer. Cause I, you know, I love uploading stuff or having a new video to put out and it's a cool thing. And yeah, I really had that been able to do that the last month, but, uh, you know, thank everybody for sticking with me and it's going to pay off. I think August is going to be really good. We got a lot of cool stuff coming in August. So, um, there we go. So July 29th, Shaz Man Hole Punch. Watch for it. Wait for it. Love it. So we're going to Otakon? Uh, was it Otakon? Otakon. Next week? Uh, Are you on the yeah. show next week or what? Uh, dude, I'm leaving on Thursday morning, I think. But Wednesday night, we're going to a show in the city. What is the show? <sighs> Spiegel show. World Circus raises its tent in the big city. It's a variety show. Um, if you've seen the show Absinthe in Las Vegas, it's, I believe, the same company. This is something that's good? Uh, the Vegas show was hilarious. Like, we saw a dude sitting in front of a desk, just stack chairs, hopping up them all the way to the ceiling, and then stack them down without knocking it over. We saw somebody dancing inside of a giant bubble. Um, acrobats, comedians, uh, some off-color humor a little bit. But it was hilarious. It was a really great show. So we don't know if we're going to have OJ next week because he's going on or another vacation. Or record it like a day early or something. OJ goes on vacation every week. I hardly go on <laughs> vacation, dude. I've been bogarting my vacation days. Right now. All right, well, we'll have to figure it out then. I don't know what's going to happen here. Don't worry. We'll present you with some wonderful entertainment one way or another. Do not be afraid. Do 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 do. Do you want to talk about Otacon, Rodicon, or you say? I still can't figure it out. All right, what about it? What Anything do you want, you want to know? To say about it? Well, this are, is a convention. Are you, talk to, are you going to talk to the people? Sure, I'll say a little bit. I yeah. want people to go up to you and ask for your juice. All right, it's fine with me. Now, I up your juices. Yeah, yeah. Look, I'm going to tell you, Otacon is the second convention I ever went to, and it was the first one where I uh, stayed overnight somewhere. And it's a real, it's, it's huge, but I found every single person I've run into is incredibly nice. I say this about a lot of conventions, I guess, but... What would you say is the biggest convention? The, the biggest anime convention I've been to. Sorry, I what, forgot to say Like anime. size, like in general, though, like how big is it, is it like bigger than, uh, what's, like what's the size? I think, what was it, was it 30,000 last year? Wow. I can't remember exactly how big it was. Not bad. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it's... Uh, there's the artist's alley is always a ton of fun um and the dealer's room is humongous yeah like it is just a gigantic yeah we've, we've gotten over twenty nine thousand people here so wow yeah i'm thinking next year i might just start going like to these conventions even though i'm not really like uh i wouldn't say I'm, like a big convention person you know but Especially like the anime stuff, and that's not really my thing. Well, but I think I should just start going to this stuff and filming. Well, yeah, man. Well, did you see? Like, if you like, I I got a little bit of Pax footage, which is pretty cool. And if you ever wonder where I got all that autographed Street Fighter stuff, yeah, they ha the Capcom gets a booth, man. Bunch of but places. I kind of no. have like uh, I I got a thing going now with the with these cons. You know, I have like a, a nice uh, gimmick going. Yeah. So I think I should be just go to as many as I can and uh, film and. It puts stuff out. And I'll tell you, I, I enjoy it too. That's good. Now I'll tell you one thing. Otakon is the first convention I went to. The first time, uh, it's where I debuted the Dan costume, and uh, that makes it. Uh, it's a little special. I mean, that was so much fun. This was back before Street. This was 2007, 2006. This was no one knew who Dan was. Yeah, nobody knew who Dan was. So I think I was the. F I, I didn't see anybody dressed as Dan that year. And it was a wonderful experience. A ton of people dressing as Dan now. That's cool. That's cool. But uh, it was... Uh, it will always have a special place in my heart and my memory. Did you know that uh, they're coming out with JoJo's Bizarre Adventure HD? Version? No. And Marvel vs. Capcom 1. Hey, you know what would be even better? Capcom vs. SNK 2. Millionaire Fighting 2000. Zicking 1. <sighs> well, according to them, they don't have the licensing to do it anymore, to put it out. Well, then somebody better get in touch with SNK. Right. You don't want that game to come out. There's I love people... that game. You don't want that to come out. Well, dude, what the frell am I supposed to do? I can't find it nearby without going all the way to the zicking New York City. All these people are going crazy. They want this game to come out on Xbox and I'd pin PSN. I question if these people ever played the game. <laughs> what? It is now, so much fun. Don't get me wrong. 
Don't get me wrong. I love the game. I actually played it uh, competitively. That was the first game I played in tournaments and stuff. I was there. I played it like a lunatic for years. But you get to a certain level with that game, and it's just, it's just out of control. <laughs> Dude, you don't have to play it. Don't get it for the hardcore folks. Get it for people like me who just, like, this was the first fighting That's game I put a lot of time into. The game is insanely unbalanced. I mean, I, like, like uh, Kiyosuke, his, his, uh, his fierce does as much as, like, Sagat's jab. And Sagat's fierce is, like, half your bar. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Well, you, you, well, you know what? I, I would definitely, if it came out, I would definitely get it. I would definitely play it again, you know. But um, I kind of fear that day because I know it's just going to get to the point where, like, I'm going to play it a lot and then it's just going to run into the into the craziness, uh, the real cancels. And you're kind of a beast stuff. with Blanca. I love, don't get me wrong, people are going to get mad. Oh, it gives you awesome. Blah, blah, blah. You guys? I played, the, I played the, more of that game in, than uh, 99% of the humans on Earth. <laughs> Well, you just I do wait. know that. Yeah. <laughs> I will say this. Y'all just wait. When that comes out, you're going to fear my Kyo Vice Ryu K Groove team. That would be one that I wouldn't mind if they maybe uh, did something like a like an alternate version or something. Like, they, you know, they, sh- they should include the original version. Then maybe do something like a cleaned up one and, and maybe mess with some stuff. Where I don't Sagat know. doesn't kill everyone by breathing. Yeah, I mean, they did... Uh, they did a version for um, the original Xbox that took out had to throw out the roll cancels and they kind of tried to mess with it. Easy but, operation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, no one wants to, no to hear about the fighting game stuff. That was last week. Stop talking about it. Okay. <laughs> so all I do now is to bring in uh, the man of the hour and uh, we'll be right back. All right, it's that time again. Lock up your wives. Put the kids to bed. Welcome to the show from YouTube.com. Slash Cyberdemon five three one, the most controversial man appearing on a podcast right now at this moment. <sighs> Ladies and gentlemen, Cyberdemon is here. Hello, Cyberdemon. Is it a soundboard? Kinda, yeah. How's it going, sir? I am fine. How are you doing? You want to know summer vacation now? Did you begin your summer vacation? Yes, yes, I am. What kind of plans do you have for the summer? Nothing at all. No, no big plans or nothing going on? Not really. Are you excited to be out of school? Yes, yeah, it is. It's pretty good. Very good? Yeah. Are you, are you done with school now or are you still have more, some little more to go? What's going on? Uh, a little bit more than I'm, I'm alright. All right, good, you're almost free, huh? Time. Putting your time in and then you'll be released into the, into the, the world. Yep. I fear, I fear society when you, when you are loose. <laughs> but uh, I guess it's inevitable. We will have to deal with you. Yep. So last time you were here, we kind of made like a little audio problem. I, I apologize. Hopefully, it's a little yeah. better this time. I, I think I it's important think that people hear what you have to say and they hear your words because it's important. And there, there's a lost tapes, but that guy lost again. So yeah, what happened, happened to that? that? Is that still up? I don't think so. Yeah, if he was honored villager, I actually like recut the audio and put it up. I don't know if he still has it up or not. I'm not sure. He like disappeared uh, from the internet. Huh. I'll track him. I didn't know this. I'm gonna track him down. So Cyberdam, we have several questions for you. Submitted by the Ramborgia. Are you prepared for this? Yes, and I'm playing Minecraft right now. So. At the same time you're on the show. Yeah. You, you're just mind that good. Trained. <laughs> All right. First question is from Salute the Salute the Sun Band. It says, "Cyber Demon, why are they putting fluoride in the water? They want to kill you. Who wants to kill it? who? They, obviously. Who is they? That's the thing. You don't know. It's just they. These mysterious people are trying to. Who are they trying to kill? Everyone. Yep. It's a genocide." What should we do about this? Um, I don't know. They've kind of got us trapped here. Should we stop drinking the water altogether? Yeah, but then you die. So you're you're pretty much dead either way. There's nothing we can do. Nope. We're just gonna we just got to drink these these pollutants. Can we make our own water? Some is it possible to make our own water somehow? Um, you could try. How would we go about doing that? Yeah, I'm not a scientist. I wouldn't know. 
Audrey, do you have any questioning along these lines here? So if we can't drink the water and we can't drink the milk, what about what about the What's alcohol? With the milk? What about the Powerade? I asked him if we could drink the milk, and he said no. Oh, you did? Yeah. Can we drink the milk? No. Can we? What can we drink? Gatorade? What, what can we have? Actually, yeah, that's fine. All right. Okay. We can, we figured out a solution here. Yeah, but you know how much sugar there is in Gatorade? If that's the only liquid we drink, we're going to be in deep trouble. All right, OJ, you, re you read off the next question. These are important questions. Next question comes from Juggernaut14578. Cyber Demon! Exclamation point, exclamation point. Why is it that cleaning items like Clorox only kill 99.9% .9 of germs? Do you believe that that point... 1% is a germ on steroids? The reason they only do 99.9% .9 is because they say 100% they wouldn't actually be able to do it and they would get sued. Huh. Is it actually 99.9% .9 or is that a lie as well? Oh, that's probably a lie. It's more around 80 most likely. And what about you the germs? know a lot about this. Yeah. I'm just making things up as I go. Do you, have you done research about this or how does this work? Absolutely not. Do you feel that maybe we shouldn't kill the germs? Maybe we should allow them to remain? Yes, then we can have a nice perhaps, society. Perhaps, they will counter, perhaps the germs will counteract the fluoride in the water. And That's uh, actually yeah. a good idea. Wow, see what we're doing here? We're, we're spreading the love. We're solving problems as we go for society. Two problems together create <laughs> one solution. Cyber demon. Who will be your running mate come this November? I assume you're running for president, presidency? Uh, I didn't know that, but I guess I am now. Who will be your running mate when you run? Um, John Carmack. John Carmack. I'd say that your yes. uh, campaign would be doomed. Oh, ho. And it would be really easy for everyone to ID you. I don't understand these jokes. They're over That's my head. Thing. That's actually pretty good. Who do you support politically? Who do you stand by, Cyber Demon? Um, I stand by no one. Who do you think is the worst of uh, the two evils? <laughs> That's the same question worded differently. No, I said, who's the worst well, of the two evils? Some. Beg your pardon? I'd, I'd say they're pretty much the same. It doesn't matter. Yeah. So you will not be voting, I assume. No, I'm not. Okay. Two reasons. I can't, and I don't want to. If you had the ability to vote, would you would you vote? No. Will you ever not, vote? Uh, it doesn't matter if you vote. It means nothing. Nope. If you met like a hot chick and she wanted you to vote, would you vote for her? Would you would I like would I vote for that person or would I no, vote no, for no, someone no. else? No, that no, no, person. No. Let's say she wa she's you meet this woman, you have a lovely night together, she is a very politically active person. And she says, I want you to vote. Tomorrow, when I go to vote, would you do it? I would pretend to vote. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> well, I, I, see, I, this is why like, I, I, I like you so much. I respect you because you stick to like, your beliefs. You know, and that's, it's not, that's a rare thing to find, I think, right? Yeah. I guess so. so. But that, that does raise a good question. What happens if you go into the voting booth to vote and you walk out without having voted? I think you're. I think you can do that. I think you're fine to do that. Huh? But you know what? I think you can. When you go in the ones that with the um, the curtain and you pull the thing down. Yeah. You could not push any of the buttons and just and just push it through. Actually, don't you have to pull the lever to open the curtain to get out? Yeah, but you don't have uh -oh. to push the. Uh, you don't have to actually vote for anyone. I think. I think you yeah. can just go in and shut it and then open it. Huh. Because you don't have to vote. You don't have to vote for every category. This is true. Mm. So I think Cyberdemon would get away with this. I would, partially because I'm awesome. I see. Definitely. Not really. Joe, why don't you read the next? Yeah, one? yeah, yeah. It's kind of, uh, it's kind of uh, disgusting, and I don't, I don't read those kind of question comments. Oh, believe me, be I'll, I'll read this one. This one's from <laughs> our pal Golden Flare. Cyberdemon, if you went out hiking with your dad, and a poisonous no, I like this snake. One bit his penis, would you suck the venom out or let him die? These are your only options. Hmm. Wow, it's heavy. I'd probably let him die. Really? Yeah. 
because no matter what I do, I wouldn't be able to do it well enough. So you wouldn't be able to suck it uh, well enough to, to shave him. Yeah, that's not so a skill like, you possess. That's not my. Uh, I is this something that. that could be could be learned? Is this something that maybe we, they should teach in schools so that if this situation came up, then people's parents would be all right? Actually, that's a good idea. We should have like a mandatory class. They teach CPR, and then you go, well, now here's the sucking class. <laughs> Just rotate the dummy around. We can use the same one. Whoa. Wow. <laughs> That's a little bit too far. I know what job OJ will be applying for. <laughs> now, we need a volunteer to play the dummy. Yes. Got this one. A volunteer? Like, he doesn't want money for it. He'll just do it for free. <laughs> I'll be the volunteer. It's like, no, we'll pay you, sir. No, I don't want money. It's fine. I do this for the community. Exactly, yeah. That's how it's done. So, well, you'll let him die. Okay, we found out the answer to that. Yep. Cyber Demon, if you could have only the genitals of any superhuman character from any media, essentially giving you a super crotch, whose would you want mm. and why? That's from The Merc with the Mouth. Oh, all right. Um... I would choose a barrel. Wait, what? A barrel from uh, one of the uh, you know comics and stuff because there's always barrels. Barrels. So I would choose them. Yeah, you know, like when they're in the the fighting scenes and they're like in a warehouse and there's barrels everywhere. I'd okay. be the barrel. You would have the generals of a barrel. Yes. <laughs> like Barrett Donkey Kong. Holes in them. I don't know if that's a superhuman character though. It is. Barrel Man. Is that a guy? You just don't what know. Is, yeah, he, he always in? gets beat up. What is he on? You just don't know. He's like a, in the background and everything, you know. You just don't know. He's All there. Right. I mean, a shape He'll have watching. a barrel. Well, would that, how would that, well, here's my question. How would that help you? If that, your journals were made of barrels, what would that do for you? Um, we'll have to figure it out as we go. It's part of the mystery. Okay, well, that's his answer because we can't, you know, we can't dispute it. I hate the fact that by asking that question, you've gotten me thinking about it. OJ, OJ, what would you pick for that one? I just had so many horrible thoughts. For example, first, there's the obvious one of Colossus. No one can kick yeah. you in the crotch ever. They right. kick you in the crotch, they break their foot. Then if you want to be Every horrible, yeah? Sorry, I cut what? you off. I, I cut you off, Cyberdemon. What'd I you say? said that would be great i mean if you want to be really horrible i mean yeah. you could pick a shapeshifter like mystique and then you'd have any crotch you wanted mm. yeah but she's a woman so i don't know if that would work dude she a... can re reform her entire body well, uh, just went somewhere bizarre with this because you it's like if you could have the generals of any superhero character you chose mystique who actually I has just used that as an example of a shapeshifter <laughs> name another popular shapeshifter besides the wonder twins I don't know. That's what I'm saying. You can't pick Mystique because she doesn't have male genitalia. She does you want... sometimes. No, she doesn't. When she changes into a dude. She has pants on. Why would she go into that much detail? You don't draw. The, you don't draw the genitalia underneath the pants. Why of every would she character. do that though? Why would she do? If she's shape shifting, why would she do that? There's other. Sh there's dude shape shifters. I just don't remember their names. I don't think there are any dude shape shifters. There's there's more but, from X Men cartoon who was yeah. dead. In the yeah, so, there. Fine. He's dead. You can't choose him either. Uh, hey, don't blame me. Merc with a mouth is the one who came up with this question. All right. Well, I'm just gonna go with myself because I'm already perfectly fine down there. And uh, Cyber Demon, we thank you, sir. We hope you have a great yep. summer. We'll probably have you and again soon. I always like talking to you. You have very insightful things to tell us. I do. You do, yeah. I mean, it's a lot of it's very deep. You have a very unique perspective oh. on life. Your, and your perspective I enjoy on hearing things. it. Okay. So, thank you, sir. We'll talk to you later. Mm hmm. Goodbye. OJ, I know you want to talk about San Diego Comic Con. You actually went to Comic Con before, haven't you? Yeah. The one time I managed to log on at the right time on the right day before all the other people and get tickets. Was that the biggest thing you've ever went to, like convention wise? Probably, and probably that's way bigger than Tokyo Game Show, right? Uh, eh, it's probably about the same. The Tokyo Game Show was crazy because that was open to the public, so 
Yeah. There's just like there's just people coming in and leaving every second. I mean, but. San Diego Comic Con. You walk in there, just the area where the lines are, where you get all your badges and all that crazy stuff. The place is huge. Mm -hmm. Actually, I don't think I told you the weird stuff that happened when I went there. What happened? Tell First us. First of all, I went dressed as Dan Hibiki. Did someone touch you? Almost. It was, well, I was dressed as Dan Hibiki, so that was weird to begin with. And my sister and her friend, we parked kind of far away because there was free parking at her friend's place. So the three of us were walking in, and then we see this lady dressed as a hippie or something. She's wearing, like, hippie clothing. We're still, like, five blocks away, and she's just kind of gliding across the street, holding some, cradling something in her hands. She walks up to us, and I see in her hand she's got this wicker ball. Mm -hmm. Like, it looks made of wicker. She's like, would you like to hold my magic ball? So, of course, you did it. No, heck no. I think it might be laced with LSD or something. I'm like, for all that. <laughs> yeah. What would she say? She, I, I didn't say anything. She's she just like, meh, and just glided along. It was laced with LSD. <laughs> Probably, wow. it, it totally wasn't, but still, you never know. Perhaps it was a magic ball, and you will never know. I know. The powers that you would have acquired from it. Uh, the only other weird thing that happened on the way in was uh, we saw a family walking in the other direction, and they go up to us, and like, hey, can, and this kid, there, there's a, you know, a mom and dad and like th two boys or whatever, like, hey, can you beat up my mom for me? What? This is what you say about the San Diego. This is a thing that people across the world would love to go to. And this is the what OJ has to say about it. Hey, I'm not done. This is just walking in, and a woman offers him LSD, and a kid complaining to his parents. All hey, right. So hey, anyway, there's more to say about it, but I just thought that was pretty funny. All right. Met Lou Motherzik and Ferrigno. Let's talk about. You got me his autograph as well. I appreciate that. Ah, oh, you're welcome. I still have that. Thank you. You deserve it. Of course I do. <laughs> anyway. So, let's talk about this year's San Diego Comic Con. There's many developments, things came out of it. We'll kind of discuss some of that. OJ, what happened to Comic Con? You are our correspondent. We actually financed your trip to go out there. You went on the Ramborgian private jet. You were allowed into all the exclusive parties. You made out with many celebrity women and some other genders. Excuse uh, me. I've heard <laughs> so what happened to, what happened to Comic Con? What, 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 report to us. Well, Robert Downey Jr. kind of rocked the house a little bit. He uh, he. I like how you're saying this with like a news a news a newsish accent. Am I? All Robert right. Downey Jr. <laughs> All right. Well, I'll continue, please. And uh, Robert Downey Jr. They had. A, it looked like there was a contest for kids dressed up as Iron Man and they had a bunch of kids uh, all up on costume. One guy had like glitter stones all over his helmet and mask and there were some girls there so I guess iron women and whatnot. And then iron women? Little kids man. Like they had, they had skirts and whatnot. And okay. then uh, sure. they said everyone can and then they said everyone okay now everyone on three. I am Iron Man. They did it two times and then Robert Downey and then they said, all right. And then Robert Downey Jr. came out, and he's chanting it with them and everything. They're all having a blast. And he's like, all right, I have picked a winner for the Iron Man contest. Best Iron Man. It's me. Nice. Yeah, I mean, he did some other stuff, too. Like, he entered wearing, wearing a one gauntlet with a repulsor on it. All the crazy stuff like that. That's pretty cool, man. Yeah, I mean, he really I'm got into the go. character. I'm going to have to go. I would love to go again. We need someone on the West Coast to buy the tickets for us or something because it's really tough to log in from here. But uh, as long as we're talking about Marvel, yeah, quite a lot right. of Marvel stuff going on here. What have we got? Well, there's what they call Phase 2. There's going to be a Thor 2, Thor the Dark World, Captain America the Thor Winter the Soldier. Dark World. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, this must be uh, the Thor um, Twilight Princess crossover. Uh much awaited. Dark that was those linked to the past, wasn't it? All right, yeah, link to the past, whatever. <laughs> uh -huh. I was going for something more recent here. I see. Not, not that link to the past isn't a superior game and a much more iconic. Yeah, well, now, now people are gonna be mad that you said that. Well, it's <laughs> anyway, <laughs> so there's going to be Thor: The Dark World, Captain America Two, Captain America: The Winter Soldier. The Winter Soldier. That's a character. Oh, is it now? Who, who will play the? Oh, it's gonna be Bucky, probably, right? Isn't that Bucky? Bucky. Oh, but Bucky. Now, do we all remember what happened to Bucky in the movie? 
fell from from a train. Oh no! Throw Bucky from the train. But he was also frozen in time. Oh really? Ironic. Hmm. Coincidental. Interesting. Coincidental. Now. Well, you don't think he was actually thrown? What are you, what are you trying I'm to say? I'm just messing, man. I I'm just messing, but uh. It's good stuff. I, I, I'm eager to see it. I liked Captain America 1. I liked Thor 1. Yeah. It should be good. Now, here's a little bit something crazy. This is a little bit, something a little bit less well-known. Those of you who bought Marvel vs. Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3 will be a little f more familiar with some of these characters. Not Marvel vs. Capcom 3. Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3. Right. Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3. With the special DLC patch and the download token. Which you only get by reserving it at Denny's, <laughs> which then gives you five dollars off the DLC from the Capcom store and unlocks okay. the subtitles to the Phoenix Wright movie. Please continue. Guardians of the Galaxy. This is a movie. This is a movie. Wow. And it looks like, according to this article here from IGN, it's going to have Gamora, Star Lord, Groot, Drax the Destroyer, and everyone's favorite. Rocket Raccoon. There's <laughs> no Howard the Duck? No Howard the Duck, I'm afraid. I was really hoping for Howard the Duck. Yeah, it's all right. I mean, uh... He already, he already had his movie. That's a good point. He was the, he was the original Marvel movie. It's, that's a scary thought, isn't it? <laughs> but there's more, man. There is much all more. All the characters to make a, a Marvel a big-budget film, Howard the Duck. <laughs> there's more. What is more? Tell us. The movie we all thought might happen, but weren't really sure. Ant-Man. 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 That's pretty cool. So uh, can we assume he'll be part of the Avengers uh, universe, maybe? Probably, but I don't know if they're going to have him in there with the Wasp. Well, there is no Wasp. Is there a Wasp now? I didn't see anything about the Wasp, but the Wasp <laughs> and Ant-Man have a lot going on. Yeah, they're the same size. They're the only ones that can uh, are compatible with each other's parts. Wait, what? Right? Wait, what? They're the, they're the same size. They can grow and shrink, man. Yeah, but it's different when you're small. They'd rather be, they'd rather be small. I don't know. Ah, uh, well, I guess then they could hide pretty much anywhere in the. Oh my gosh, can you imagine what would happen if you had the, dude? If those two people you were your, if those two people were your roommates, they could have sex on anything. You don't want that though, because they could just be in there, you're minding your own business, you're undressing, and, and no one there. comes walking underneath the underneath the door. Yeah. And they're all, all high. Um, your rent is late. Yeah. You know. Dude. And then you're like, "What are you doing? I'm getting dressed in here. What are you thinking? Go, well, I I can just do whatever I want. I'm small." Dude, <laughs> seriously. They could go into the cabinet, man. They could be doing all sorts of disgusting things to each other all over every piece of furniture in the house. Nothing would be safe. Your jewelry cabinet? Nope. Your tissue box? Nope. Your uh, miniature Well, you got to be careful bank? because now I think you're getting into some kind of a racial thing. What are you talking about? Because you're just assuming because that, that they're small that this is what they're going to do. Wait. You're insulting these people that can shrink. Those that can shrink are being insulted by you. What? Yes. What in Bob's name are you talking about? <laughs> just because they're small doesn't mean they're like derelict people that are just going to go and, and uh, you know, roll around nude on all your possessions. What are you thinking? Here? I don't know, man. A young a young married couple or a young, you know, couple could do all sorts of crazy stuff. You don't stuff. think that would be offensive to someone that can shrink? To hear this from Dude, you? Dude, if, if, if this got someone who can shrink annoyed enough at me, I would love to just congratulate them. I, I mean, assuming Simic's ability is not painful and hasn't caused them any trouble, I would congratulate them. They have a very unique gift. Well, uh, yes, and they should be celebrated, not uh, belittled. Who says so. I'm not saying they'd be celebrating <laughs> themselves? They're celebrating together. I think what's together. going on here is that you wish you could shrink and do these, these things that you're speaking of. That, that is that disgusting. Really, is that what's really happening here? Ugh, no. Just tell us if that's what the truth that is. That is not what's happening. <laughs> All right. Because the one thing I fantasize is about getting it on with somebody in top, inside of a teacup. No. I apologize then, okay? All right, it's cool. I um, apologize. Yeah. Not to mention, of course, Iron Man 3, Dur -dur -dur, Avengers 2, Dur -dur 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 -dur. Wait a minute, Avengers 2? When I is that coming out? 
I, I, I don't see anything here, but I, I'm pretty sure it's going to happen. Huh. There's a lot of Marvel stuff. What is DC doing? Because I want to talk about this. What do they have lined up here? Um, that is a very good question. Well, I have some questions about what have they been doing the last ten years. Now, it's very well Batman, Superman stuff. Where's everybody else? See, I don't know if you know about this, but uh, DC is having a Batman movie come out really soon. Yeah, I mean they're doing great with Batman, but we're, we're the it's, you know it's a whole universe of characters. Yeah, well, you know, I'm wondering. I mean, Marvel's done so well they, they, that they're making Ant Man. I mean, think about that. And then uh, DC, like, what are you, what are you doing? Well, I don't know, but here's my question: Man of Steel. Yeah, I guess that's coming. When is that supposed to come out? June fourth, twenty thirteen. Oh, jeez. It's supposed to be darker. Uh, they're always trying stuff. I mean, the the last Superman I didn't really like too much. Zack Snyder, Chris Nolan rebooting the series. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. I'm sure it'll be good. Well, here's some more weird stuff. Jan- Django Unchained with uh, Quentin Tarantino and Jim Lee. Okay. As a Western mini a, a, a mini series. What does Jim Lee have to do with this? Because it's for a, it's for a mini series. Well, like, what is he doing? A, a five issue mini series. It's a comic. Oh, uh, okay. So what is Tarantino doing then? I'm sorry. It's based on his script for the upcoming film, but isn't it an adaptation? Right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I know. What, I heard about that movie. Um. Well, what about? Okay. Okay. This is Arrow, DC stuff? a TV show based on Green Arrow hitting the CW. Oh, yeah, but they're going to make him like a like an emo teenager. Oh, F that sauce. <laughs> I F don't know if they are or not. That. I'm just, that's what they always do. I don't know. Um, well, what a... Wait, wait, wait. The only DV, DC... Are they... I hope they're... Are they really doing a Spectre and Raven? Anyway. Yeah. Um, also, to note... So apparently some people were attempting to get a booster gold series on sci-fi whatever this is speculation a lot of this is speculation right. man i'm looking for dc stuff and they got nothing but superman that's kind of sad they, they, have, they can't get this together they have so many good characters i think i think a lot of it has to do with the fact that i think the, the marvel characters kind of lend themselves to film better and i know this is controversial people are probably like they were just drinking coffee and they heard me say they just dropped the cup <laughs> Paper towels, the third drawer to the left. We think about like a lot of the Marvel characters are characters that are normal people, and then something happens, and then they become something else. So it works like a, you know works well in a movie because you could show them like doing their normal stuff, and then you show the accident or whatever it is, and then you show the transformation, and then you show the character having to deal with that, and uh, then you bring the villain in and all that stuff. It kind of works well with movies. A lot of those characters. Whereas DC, it's like a lot of them are just, oh, this, this guy's got this, and he always had it, and, you sh- and he's fast, or whatever. You know, I don't know. What do you, you think about that? You can still do that sort of stuff with... Oh, you can, yeah, but yeah, I think with a they... a lot of them, though. Oh, yeah, I think... Well, listen, don't get me wrong. I think you can do it with any of these characters, because they're all, they're all like really developed well. They have years and decades of history where you could build on. But I think for whatever reason, they feel like they... they it's not going to work, or they, they're afraid to do it, or I don't really know. Change all the things. I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm not really sure what they're, they're thinking. Like, we're, like, there should be a Flash movie. There should be... Uh, well, there was Green Lantern, but... A I, good Green Lantern movie. I don't know if they <laughs> Are they still making the sequel? I heard they were making I don't the know. sequel a long time ago. They're going to have to, because when Batman's done... They got nothing, man. There's nothing going time. on. And then the Marvel's making freaking Rocket Raccoon. <laughs> You know, I wonder if Marvel did that just to thumb their nose at them. Like, DC can't make Our a good movie. Characters out of, of movies. D- DC can't make a good movie out of Green Lantern. So we're gonna put make a Rocket Raccoon movie. You know what? Howard the Duck too. Sure, throw it out there. You know what's next? Well, you know, at the end of the day, the Batman's like the best of them all. So it's like, yeah, it's kind of weird, you know. It's like you have the best one, but that's it. And then, like, spots like 2 through 10 are all marbles. <laughs> I don't know. It's tough. Well, you know, it's a lot of cool stuff. And uh, I'll, be, I'll be watching uh, Marvel movies well into my 30s, apparently, according to all these releases. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to say something right now. I'm going to come out and reveal something to everyone that I've never talked about before. What's up? I am a huge fan of Daredevil. I knew that. Did you know that? Yeah. 
I think Daredevil at one point was like my favorite character because I. Uh, it's probably like five years ago. I really wrapped up in all the Frank Miller Daredevil stuff. <laughs> Not to mention the uh, Kevin Smith stuff was good. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. He wrote the um, that one thing, and when they when they rebooted it, <laughs> like ten years ago. But yeah, I read uh, I read a lot of Daredevil. I love Daredevil. It's one of my favorite characters. Um, I hope I would hope they would remake a Daredevil movie, a new one. That's not <laughs> as bad. <laughs> it's funny. They like they're gonna remake Spider Man. Daredevil's like, hello. They're kind of like you had your chance. <laughs> you know, the movie wasn't like it was good to a point, and then it just kind of fell apart. But a lot of it was pretty good, and then it just kind of. And the suit's awful. Yeah. And then you have, like, Bullseye. Like, why does he have the Bullseye on his, I don't know, on his head? I don't remember. Who played Bullseye? Colin Farrell. That's so weird, because Colin Farrell's generally awesome. Yeah, it's like the movie just kind of missed. I mean, it's it's not awful, but I just didn't really nail it. So I I like to see the Daredevil movie. What's that? The potential was there. Yeah, I, I like, I'm just saying, I'd like to see a new one. I, I think the character's really, really deep. Kevin, you got time till Avengers 2. Just uh, get on that. Yes. The name was your Daredevil someday, I don't know. But I just, my fear is that they're just kind of like you had your run and you're done, you're finished. What? Don't give up. <laughs> All right. I, there really wasn't too much else listed here for DC, man. I, I did a search for DC, and I got Deadpool teaser announced. I'm like, come on. That's so Marvel it hurts. Well, Deadpool has a video game coming. Yeah, and there was and one of the top videos on IGN was like, Ryan Reynolds pushes for R-rated Deadpool movie. <laughs> Great. Hey, I don't know. You need someone annoying to be Deadpool, though. Right? Um... Yeah, but they're not going to just give it to anybody. It's going to have to, you know, that's why he has it. I'm sorry? They're not just going to give these roles to anyone. You know, these are a major, you know, things. So they, yeah. they feel like it has to be, like, you know, this guy or that guy. So Top comment on that Deadpool thing. R-rated Deadpool movie, yes. Green Lantern 2, no. <laughs> Thanks, guys. That's really sad. Thanks for giving him a chance, you a-holes. <laughs> yeah, they blew it the first time, but they can make it up if it's... If Sinestro, okay, just completely off track for a minute. Green Don't Lantern bad. 1 had a lot of problems. Green Lantern, here's what I'm going to say, though. Don't do this. Green Lantern 2, if that happened, power ring fights are awesome. That's all I'm going to say. The brief yeah, little bit you saw in Green Lantern ring? 1. Why would they allow him to build the yellow ring? I don't understand. And why would they let him keep it? It's so stupid. Yeah, I know he steals it, blah, blah, blah. I mean, there's a lot of stupid stuff. I just want to see the power ring fights, man. That was Why so Star cool. Why a freaking snake or whatever you're supposed to be? Ugh. It was so cool for like two seconds in Green Lantern 1 when they were fighting each other. It was mm. awesome. I'm like, I could watch this. I could watch this guy beat up criminals. I could watch this guy fight all sorts of crazy stuff. That's super cool. And then... It would me nuts. Like when, uh, <sighs> when he has the power, like everyone's like way too co- comfortable with it. Like when he first shows the chick... <laughs> She's and like, then, oh, that's uh, nice. And it's like they're sitting up there, and she's like, oh, wow, that's pretty cool. It's like he's got like an alien thing, <clears throat> like a symbiote on him. I mean, what? He just met aliens. What's wrong with you? Not only that, yeah, aliens, this is the first time aliens ever came to the, the planet, right? Yeah, he just got drafted to a space military organization. So the entire world just changed. There's aliens now. They've, they've reached your planet. Your friend is... You know, I guess if you don't care about that, that's one thing. Well, you, I think you would care that your someone you know is now uh, has possession of this alien technology, but that's not even enough. I mean, it's <laughs> that's like finding out your best friend's got a like, I like, don't oh, know, cool. walking around everywhere with a lightsaber and a pistol, and nobody it's like seems finding to out that your friend has alien technology. <laughs> that's what you said the first time. I know that's what it's like. <laughs> that's because that's what it is. That's what it is. It is what it is. So I'd like to see, yeah, I mean, going back to their point, like see DC get on top of stuff, and I think they would be the ones. I mean, they're they're owned by Warner Brothers, right? Uh, so, yes. So I think Warner Brothers, they have studios that can make, like, Wonder Woman, Flash, uh, Green Arrow. 
Hawkman. Hawkman. Hawkman's story has just always struck me as weird. <laughs> Shazam. It should be a Shazam movie. Oh, man. Captain Marvel? That would be pretty sweet. You can't make a good Superman? What the, what's going on with this? What? How are you not able to do Superman? I don't understand. Maybe this one will be good. I guess we'll find out. Why did it take so long? What's going on? <laughs> what's happening there? Uh. So Batman's coming out. We'll talk about Batman. 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 Turn up Charles on. Um, and we'll talk about Batman with him. He's just coming out. I will not say a word until then. All right, so let's uh, let's come back with Charles. Okay. All right, joining us now is the man leading the Ramborgian Special Forces against the tyrannical Bob Saget. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the show, Charles Mooney. Yes. Hey. How's it going, everyone? How are you, sir? Oh, not too bad. You know, just living the dream. <laughs> living the dream. <laughs> what is the dream exactly? Uh... Still trying to figure that out. Oh, okay. <laughs> I thought you were going to say coming on the show was your dream. I was going to say you should raise the bar <laughs> now, that, now that you've done it. Oh, man. But, uh... <laughs> so, we actually met you at Too Many Games. Yes. You're a great guy. Thank you for coming on. Yeah, dude. But your purpose here, the reason we wanted to bring you on today, you've been leading the forces, as I mentioned, you've been leading attacks. On one Bob Saget, at Bob Saget. That's his handle, I believe. That's, that's what he goes by. And uh, just hilarious stuff. You've been doing the... We, we actually read a couple of these last time, oh. or a couple weeks ago on the show. You're a genius. You're basically giving Saget two choices. One of them being something undesirable. The second one being come on the show and do an interview. And um, so you, I, I assume you really want Saget to be on the show. Oh, yeah. Um, and I'm just trying to have fun, you know, while we're... You know, trying to get him to come on here. So, and your stuff's really funny. And I question why he hasn't blocked you yet. I'm kind of shocked by yeah, this. I, <laughs> I'm pretty shocked as well. So, and I you're think... not only uh, are, are going after Saget, then you brought Shaq into it. Shaq, Shaq. <laughs> and uh, Sean. Br I know Sean Bradley became a victim. Yeah, I'm. I'm starting to bring other uh, random victims. Into other people are are getting affected by this. Soon, yeah. someone's going to take the bait, man. I, I'm, that's what I'm hoping. So I'd like, what I'd like you to do is, you, know, you are the author of these, of these awesome little tweets. I'd like you to, if you, if you don't mind, read some of them off for our audience and for us, if you don't mind, sir. Sure. I have a All right. few picked out here. All right. Bob, two choices. Open up for Carrot Top or do an interview for the show. Wow. <laughs> hey, Carrot Top is jacked right now. That's kind of scary. Yes, but he, I mean, he's, he's a terrible comic, I think. That would be like the lowest thing you could possibly do. I mean, <laughs> oh, for Carrot Top, it would be pretty bad. Yeah. It's almost as bad as doing a YouTube show. Well, not quite. <laughs> All right, what else you got there? Bob, two choices. Bend the knee to Nickelback as the greatest rock band of all time or do an interview for the show. Wow. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Where, where, do, where do you get the inspiration for these? Do they, do they just come to you? They, they just come to me. Um, is it difficult at all? Not really. I mean, I just, through my daily interaction, like when I thought of that one, I, you know, I might have heard a Nickelback song playing somewhere. and You're like, oh, that's terrible music. Yeah. <laughs> so, but were there yeah, any? Just, Sorry. Oh, go ahead, OJ. Were there any that were particularly hard to come up with? Like, you just sat there like, man, I can't think of, and then, then like, it just, just hit you. Um, it seems like, uh, you know, the less I think about it, it, they come to me easier, the less that I think about them. So right. like if I'm thinking really hard about something, trying to come up with something clever, sometimes that's a little more difficult. They just sort of come to me. So it just comes to you randomly throughout the day while you're watching TV or in the bathroom or, you know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> at the I same throw some time, more. throw us a few more. Okay. Bob, two choices. Enjoy life on the road as a groupie for a Godier cover band or do an interview for the show. I've actually never heard that band before. Nope. I've heard bad things. I don't know what's about. You've heard that song, uh, Somebody That I Used to Know? I mean, they play it. Uh, yeah, okay, I think so. Yeah, that that's them. Okay, okay. It's <laughs> pretty bad. Yikes. Further nickel back, though, but still pretty bad. Yeah. <laughs> Open for both of them. <laughs> 
Bob, two choices. Be an understudy for the role of Aunt May in the Spider-Man musical or do an interview for the <laughs> Dude, that would be hilarious, man. <laughs> you could do it. He's a great actor. Yeah, he'd be able to pull that off. I think he might take this as a challenge. My favorite ones that you've done are the ones where you brought in Stamos. You brought in the other Full House cast. Yeah. Oh, I, I have one on here on the okay. list, a Full House cast one. Bob, sure. two choices. Send your kids to Candace Cameron's homeschooling academy or do an interview for the show. Oh, <laughs> oh Candace She's known to have many uh, substance abuse problems, I believe. Is that... No, she's like a hardcore fundamentalist uh, Christian. Oh, okay. She, Shape thing. She, she endorsed some <laughs> online homeschooling academy. Oh, wow. <laughs> Jeez. Well, her brother, her brother was very religious. I remember that. Yeah. yeah. Wait a second. Wait a second. She's not related to... Yeah, she's Kirk Cameron's brother. Holy shnikes. I do not know this. I do not know this. Seriously? It's like basic information. I did. When, when you're born, you know you know your name, you know where you live, and you know that. I never realized Ooh. that. DJ is ah, that is just my 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 childhood is confused now. Growing Pains was it was a good show. They did this great storyline. Where Kirk Cameron's character met this chick, right? You ever see this on, on the boat? Or she was the she was the she was the babysitter. I'm sorry, right? You know what I'm talking about, anyone? Babysitter. No. She was the ba- she was the babysitter for the other kids. And she winds up dating Kirk Cameron's character. But, Kirk, but what turns out is that she actually pulls for Playboy like five years before this. Kirk Cameron's a hardcore Christian, so he finds out and he kicks her off the show. Ah, I think, the show. I, think I might have heard something about that. I don't, yes. don't really remember all the details, but that sounds familiar. Yeah, it's worthless information. Give us some more Sega tweets. Okay. Bob, two choices. Try to pull off Super John Rambo's hat or do an interview for the show. Hashtag... You don't pull Superman's cape. <laughs> <laughs> very nice, very nice. All right, I got a couple more here. Uh, All right. Bob, two choices. Inscribe the lucky numbers of fortune cookies for P.F. Chang's or do an interview for the show. Well done. Uh, I got two more here. So, Bob, okay. two choices. Wear a Daniel Tosh mask to perform stand-up in or do an interview for the show. <laughs> Oh, man. I don't know if you've been following the news at all, but he's in some yeah, yeah. water. I've heard this, yes. Hot water. Yeah. This, yeah, so. I, I mean, I don't know exactly. That's the thing. I hear. I, I heard there's like conflicting stories with what happened, and unless you were there, you're never going to know what really happened, you know? Right, yep. It's such a thin line in, uh, in comedy, really. It's, it's very tough. Yep. All right, and for the knockout, Bob, two choices. Be Jerry Sandusky's stunt double in the documentary about his life in prison or interview for the show. Oh. I... <laughs> so I assume Saget's got to be seeing some of these because... He's got to. <laughs> he does have like he does like a million, 1.5 million subscribers, but you've sent, what, probably 50 tweets to him? Yeah. Chances are he's seen, he's seen a couple of these and, things. And right? I was actually looking. At, even though he has all those followers, it doesn't look like... You know, he's not like a, a an athlete or a fan. You don't really, no one talks to him. Yeah, exactly. So he's not getting that's... mass amounts of tweets each day. So. Oh, yeah. that's kind of sad. But, he's not an athlete. Five, no one talks to him. Dude. He's got a lot of subscribers, dude. But no one wants to connect with him. They just want to you read know what? Him. I will say this about him. I, I actually follow him. And there's been there's been a few people that I follow that I had to stop following. It's because they're, you know, awful, awful tweets. The people that I like, I'm like, I can't follow this guy anymore. But Saget's actually pretty good. He does, he says some funny stuff, and he's he's not he's pretty, he's pretty good. So yep. he doesn't do like a hundred a day. But uh, my, my point here is, he's obviously seen some of these. What do you think he thinks about this when when he sees this? What, do you, what, go through, what does he think? Um, what do you think that he thinks? I'm hoping he thinks some of them are funny, and you know, he'll just he'll reach out and. Say what the hell is the show, and we go from there. <laughs> yeah, I actually never. Uh, we we keep talking about him and like when we want him on, but I never actually attempted to do it, like contact him in any way, yeah. shape or form, to to ask him to do it politely. All it's been is like people just attacking him. <laughs> well, it's so not I like you guys are saying, "Bob Sag, you're terrible. Go do the show." You're saying something funny. Right. It's yeah. it's all in good fun. But so. my fear is that if I ever like actually somehow if this is even possible like get in touch with someone that could like talk to him about it that he would be like no fuck that because <laughs> these guys are jerks you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
Well, we didn't. We didn't do anything. We were just thinking it's awesome. Uh, by, by all means, continue. Please continue. Yeah. This. It's Anyone in the Ram border that wants to join in, you know, I encourage you. Um, I've been using hashtag two choices and hashtag the show to kind of try and link everything together. So um, a few people, a few people I've seen have, have joined in as well. Right. But yeah, we we got to like pick a day maybe and just go nuts. I was thinking the same thing. We'll figure it out at some point. Wow. So are you going to continue this? Are you going to continue with Shagat? Are you going to move on to Deep Coulier or well, perhaps Kirk Cameron? Uh, I'll probably just keep going with Saget and incorporate yeah. other people into it and uh, you know, just keep doing what I do. <laughs> Tony Danza. You know Saget's got his own t-shirts? Really? I was thinking about getting one, yeah. On the website. <laughs> One says, one says, like, um, I was rolling with Saget or something like that. That was pretty cool. I don't know. So. Well, sir, thank you for your efforts. It's hilarious stuff. Um, we talked to you off the air. You mentioned uh, Batman. So we're going to talk about Batman anyway, so you might as well join in with us. Sure. Uh, OJ, are you mumbling the Batman song? John, are you there? I'm here. Were you just mumbling the Batman song? I, I I cannot prove or disprove that statement. Did it, did you even mean to do that? Just come out, just slip out. Uh, or just something you like intentionally did. I want to know. Is whatever happened must have been on purpose. Pop culture is just soaked into your brain so deep that you can't even control your your impulses just to bust down into into song. At this I was point. like singing the Mario song all day in the elevator. Not that I spent yeah. all day in the elevator. I mean, I spent most of the day at my desk, but. The elevator nice. times were mostly Mario times. So I'll, I'll ask you guys this. Batman, Dark Knight Rises, little movie coming out Friday. Are you excited to see it? Charles, what do you have to say? I'm very excited. It's probably the uh, movie that I'm looking most forward to this summer. Uh, I've always been a huge Batman fan. I remember seeing uh, the, the first Batman uh, with my dad. Back in the movie theater, you know, when I was a kid, the one with was it 1989. Yeah, Michael Keaton, Jack Nicholson, yeah. and nice. You know, um, but yeah, I, I love what Christopher Nolan's done with the Batman series, and uh, you know, I'm hoping he wraps it up. Uh, and I'm hoping for a good movie. Are you the kind of person that like you stay on top of all the news and the trailers and all the secret, all like the information that comes out? Or do you kind of wait for it to... I know OJ doesn't like to do that. What do you, what's your approach? Early on, I like to, you know, look at some of that stuff just to see, you know, who, what characters are going to be in it and whatnot. But as it's getting closer to the release date, I've kind of tried to avoid, uh, right. you know, as much of that stuff as possible because I don't, I don't want to spoilers or anything. So, What about you, OJ? What's going on? Well, I'm very much looking forward to this movie. I mean, I've been, like you said, avoiding spoilers like the plague and whatnot. I accidentally went to uh, go check up on a game a friend of mine wanted. So I went to, uh, or he wanted me to go check a review site for him or something like that. I ended up at the site and it's like, and it had a rating for Batman already. I'm like, what's oh, wrong no. with you? Fortunately, this, starting this, to come out. this, yeah, but this early in the, in the thing, it's not going to be a comprehensive number or anything. So yeah, I think I'm still relatively unsullied. It was around tomatoes. No, it wasn't around tomatoes. It was a, it was a different one. Yeah, but, uh, saw... it's a new one now. It was Metacritic. Oh, uh, okay. It's on I the saw... front zicking page, man. Yeah, I saw IGN had a review up too. Um, so don't tell me. Don't go. Don't say numbers. <laughs> don't go. Numbers. Is, that the, is that the review said? Don't go. Don't go to IGN. To uh, check like I, the review started coming out like the last couple of days, and I've definitely been avoiding that. Yeah, I will say this. I mean, I saw maybe one or two trailers. I mean, I was at a movie theater, and the last time I hummed to myself and shut my eyes in a movie theater, the family sitting in front of us moved forward two rows. So this time I just kind of watched the trailer. So this is my impression of Dark Knight Rises. Um, Batman watches football. That's, that's the movie. Yeah, I saw that scene. Batman watches football. Yeah, I definitely try to avoid stuff as much as possible. I know, like, little things. It, it, it gets to a point where you can't avoid it just because it's over, like, the advertising so heavy. Yeah. yeah. Then I'm like, stop. I'm already going. You don't need to do this to me. You know? I'm already going to go see it. Stop. You're On spoiling your, it. Your, we're your target I, demographic. Calm down. You <laughs> yeah. I, I think the one thing that, um, for 
everyone that follows like the Batman comic books and everyone who's familiar with Nightfall, I think everyone's looking forward to seeing what they, you know, I'm not going to say what happens for those that don't read the comics, but everyone's looking forward to see how that translates onto. It it looks like that some sort of thing that happens with that. Yeah. Similar. I don't know, but I see some people like going nuts. Like this is, they changed Bane. They changed him. Well, it's like, well, being kind of need a little bit more, so you know, than you had, honestly. So maybe I, I, we'll have to see how it goes. I, I mean, I was, oh, oh go ahead. No, you go first, then I'll say my ridiculous. Thing. I was gonna say it's got to be better than what Joel Schumacher did to him, and right, exactly. Robin, I mean, that was hard. Mr. Bane, as Schwarzenegger would call him all the time, Mr. Bane. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this is honestly when I was, when I saw that trailer with with Bane in it in the commercial, I could swear like. I was picturing, in my mind, he seemed like Hannibal Lecter. Like, the way he was talking and everything? I don't know. That's, that's, that's like, kind of, and the way he looked, that's just the gist I got. It's funny that Bane became, like, such a big character, though. I mean, um, you, look, you look at all the Batman characters, and then Bane gets two movies. <laughs> you know, where, where's the movie for Egghead? What? <laughs> Well, yeah. Did, Bain, did you guys hear like how, you know how um, they showed this, the opening of Dark Knight with, uh, I think it was I Am Legend. They showed it in IMAX, the first six minutes of the movie. Where, yeah, yeah, so yeah. They did the same thing with uh, some scene in Dark Knight Rises with Mission Impossible last year. And okay. Yes, the way they had Bane's voice in, in uh, that early cut of the movie no one could understand what he was saying. So <laughs> had to go back and re-edit everything so everyone could understand what he was saying. So that's oh, What's he saying? What? <laughs> he wants a sandwich, huh? <laughs> oh, he's telling me. Don't go to the movie? Is that what he's telling you saying to me? <laughs> Do not watch this movie? Oh, did, did, did you hear about the uh, Rush Limbaugh Bane thing? Oh, I, I, so, yeah, I read about that. That was pretty funny. So apparently, Rush Limbaugh said some statements on his show, basically, the villain in Batman is Bane. Mitt Romney ha- worked for, owned, a, or whatever, managed a company called Bane Capital, blah, blah, blah. Oh, God. Is this, is this clear? Is this a conspiracy to help the Obama campaign? Are you kidding me, dude? He said that. And then <laughs> there was more, rea- apparently, people just flipped out on him for it, more than anything. Yeah. And, uh... Yeah. Yikes. So. That's awful. That's, that's, hey, kids, that's what happens when you pop too many painkillers. So. <laughs> stay away, yeah, that's true. Stay away from the drugs. Fries your brain. You, you turn into a hulking maniac or you turn into Bane? No, I'm, I'm saying Rush Limbaugh. <laughs> oh, like I said, yeah. Gotcha. <laughs> so, that, <laughs> so, I think, yeah, that's what this is be the, the movie of the summer. There's always like one movie that, you know, like stuff sells out beforehand. That's when you know it's like a, a big deal. And it uh, looks like a lot of the midnight showings for Batman are, are gone Oh, so you get tickets for Friday. Yeah, I was actually telling John earlier, I waited too long. I just got my tickets yesterday, but I waited too long. And there's uh, four IMAX theaters, like, within 40 minutes of my house. And all the midnight showings at every single one of them were sold out. So I got a 3.30 a.m. showing. Holy pants. <laughs> Whoa, they're doing that? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, well, unfortunately, I probably I probably can't go until Monday, but um, we'll talk about it next week. So that'd yeah. Be cool. Well, one thing that I, I one thing that usually ends up happening with me is I'll see the movie like in a regular theater, you know, like the day the, the day it comes out. Then I'll go see it in IMAX with my dad because he loves IMAX. Really? Yeah, it happens a bunch of times. Like he just the giant screen, dude. Not not necessarily IMAX 3D, but just the the screen, the sound system, the the, the gigantic stadium seating. I don't know. Sometimes it's worth the money, especially if you get to go with your dad or someone important to you. So, yeah, and and I was reading that they filmed uh, a good amount of this movie in IMAX, so the the picture is going to fill the screen for a lot of the action scenes and <laughs> whatnot. Because I know sometimes they upscale the movies. It's not really true IMAX. Like if they, if yeah, they in IMAX. You, but, you know, yeah. One thing I want to see. You know, did you guys see that commercial for Mountain Dew where this guy just is drinking Mountain Dew and it makes villains and Batman pop out everywhere and there's big fights going on in the street? 
Oh. Yeah, I'm curious to see how often Mountain Dew pops up in the movie. I It'll hope be in it there. Doesn't. I hope it doesn't. Those but things it's like those things kind of hurt the movie in like in the in the weird context. I saw Spider Man, and right before the movie, they showed this thing that looks like the beginning of the movie, with Spider Man like climbing, and he's like, "Go to Target to get discounts on school supplies or something." Like, <laughs> you're like, "What? They just ruined the whole movie." Yeah, they had another one where there was the, well, this one was kind of more cute. They had a little kid in like a Spider Man outfit, and then he shoots his web, and it actually comes out, and he goes flying onto a building, like you know, repels onto a building, and Spider Man's are like, "Hey." Nice suit. And then, yeah, then they tell him, if you want costumes like this, go to Target. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah, that's what it's stuff. So it's like, what the hell? And see, like, that's one thing about Batman, they, they, they're kind of protective. They, I don't think they would have him go out there and be like, you know, oh, shop at Walmart. Oh, Batman. Oh, my God. <laughs> and have him, like, fight Bane inside Walmart and then, like, you know. Uh, they, they don't really do that with Batman. Spider-Man, they, he gets he gets hoard all over the place. Just a sad. little bit. Well, he's more of a, yeah. Well, Batman's a much more serious character most of the time. All right, well, I, as far as we can go, our Batman talk, I guess, because we're not going to get into speculating and, and spoilers and stuff. So I guess next week we'll be able to talk about it. Oh, he's actually going to see this movie. Snape kills Trinity with Rosebud. Awful. And uh, Luke's, Luke's uh, bitter son. <laughs> but... <laughs> <laughs> but uh, Charles, man, thanks for coming in. Hey, thanks for having me on, man. Everyone can check you out, youtube.com slash moondog40. And at moody underscore C is where you want to see all those awesome Saget tweets. You'll follow them there. Keep your eyes peeled, folks. I follow you. Did you know that? Yeah, I, I saw that. It's not impressive to you at all. You're just like, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, I saw that. Aww. All right, cool. Yeah, thanks for having me on, guys. And All right, man, are you uh, going to come to any conventions anytime? Uh, like, see you again at a convention or something? I was talking to my buddy yesterday. I'm thinking about um, going up to New York Comic Con, if I'm able to. Oh, good times. All right. It's looking like we're probably going to be going, so. And um, what's the one in January in Balt in Maryland? Eggfest. Yeah, I'm thinking about going to that. I'll definitely be at too many games, next year. I've gone there for, like, the past three years. Um, All right, great. But, yeah. Hopefully. And All right, sir. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Keep up the good fight with Saget. I will. <laughs> we'll defeat him. All right. All right. Adios. You yep. are my hero, sir. All right. So I know there's one other thing you want to talk about. Yeah, yeah. You're going to top of your game. You're preparing all these things. I'm doing, What's going on with, I'm doing my What's best, going man. What's going on here? I, I just, you know. Are you be concerned? Why would you be concerned? I don't know. So, you want to talk about it? Why don't you take it away and let us know what's going on? Brief little thing. For those of you who hadn't heard about this, I'm sure you're aware that Viacom owns a good number of networks, such as MTV, Comedy Central, you know, Nickelodeon, a, a whole bunch of, you know, pretty decent networks. Well, I don't really like MTV that much anymore. But anyway, so, those of you with DirecTV were probably hurting rather recently because there has been a very large spat between the two of them. I'm not aware if you had heard about this little fight, but apparently Viacom wanted, Direct TV, wanted to raise DirecTV's price um, for the channels for about 30%. Like, that's a pretty significant increase just to keep these channels. So DirecTV said, um, that's insane. Yeah, they basically said, you know, look, there's uh, all these other options now, like Netflix and yeah, they they basically uh, said, man, they so said, and so forth. So we can't, we're not going to raise. We there's no way we could raise our, you know, the price for all of our customers because yeah. we would have to do to like compensate you. Oh, well, here's the kicker. The kicker yeah. is, Directv said in a letter, all right, but and 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 guys, if you really want to watch these shows, you can watch a ton of them on Viacom Network's websites. You can right. go to their website, and for free, you can watch Daily Show, Colbert Report, South Park, all sorts of shows. Mm -hmm. To which Viacom said, oh, really? And then <sighs> took them off. How'd they do that? They disabled the viewing of a lot of their shows for a while. Oh, okay. Yeah. So on their own, they're on their, on their own websites. Their own websites? They took yeah. down their content? Uh-huh. So the DirecTV people could not... <laughs> Could not so see it. Nobody could watch it. 
What the hell? Yeah, for a while. Like yeah, dude. Then um, they've they 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 backed down eventually, but yeah. uh, though I think also that John Stewart may have said a few things on the about about it as well, which may have convinced Viacom to go. Okay. First of all, it's not free because they have ads and stuff. So they get they get money off the website yeah. stuff. But they decided uh, for them to do that. I guess they want people people are gonna get mad at Directv because I, I want to watch this, but I can't now because of you. Yeah. That's just gonna make the piss to Viacom as well. <laughs> Take it off their own site. That's just insane. Uh, it's just kind of petty from all for all. So I'm sick of the whole thing. I, I think most people agree that cable companies are like the most evil. Uh, no, I put record companies people. up there first, maybe. Record companies? Uh, okay, maybe not, but the RAA just ticks me off. Record companies uh, were similar, very similar. And uh, this is kind of why they fought against the, you know, the iTunes and all that stuff that came in. Because what they wanted to do is, like, they would sell you an album, you know. There'd be like one song you want, but you can't just buy the one song. you got to buy the whole album, right? right. There's more profit for them. Right. But they eventually had to change their model. And I think it's kind of similar to what's going on with the cable companies. That's a good point. There's a lot of similarities here. Strike. Because the cable companies are still running with the same philosophies from the 80s. <laughs> where it's like, you got to buy all the things. You can't just buy the stuff you want. you got to buy everything. So their, their big deal is like, well, we have to raise our prices for our customers to have your your stuff. Well, why does why do your customers have to have everything? Why do, why do I have to buy a package of channels? <laughs> If there's two channels I want, why do I have to buy 500 channels? That's part of the issue. You know, like the same with the music. If there's one song I want, why do I have to buy 15 songs? Well, it's a good point. I mean, but uh, it, it's it's difficult. I mean, the the costs for making a TV show are so, are astronomically higher when it com- you know compared to when you're making an album or anything. But still, yeah, it's kind of a weak comparison. But it, it, I think it's more it's more from like the company standpoint of yeah how how you could buy your content. I think we gotta get to the point where, if I want two channels, I should be able to just get the two channels and subscribe to that. That's you know, what they I gotta nickel and dime you, and get you to, to get more because that's all they offer. You gotta buy five hundred things. I'd take Comedy Central, Cartoon Network, maybe one or two more. So a lot of people don't even have cable anymore. You don't have cable, right? You just no cable. internet. You have no cable TV, and you're fine. You watch whatever you want. Honestly, I've been watching legal anime on Funimation's YouTube channel. See, like, I uh, I probably wouldn't even need cable TV, but I watch sports. So that's the only reason I, I would need it, because I like to watch sports and uh, your live, you know, your live sports on cable. I have to wonder if sports and Game of Thrones are what's saving the cable industry right now. And I also have I also have HBO for Game of Thrones. Yeah, man. And Eastbound and Down, which is over, which I really liked. Uh, but, I don't know, man, I'm just, uh, I'm just tired of it. <laughs> Too much and they're asshole. gonna fight. And they're gonna kill each other, and then eventually they'll come to some kind of agreement because they're both gonna lose money in the end. Yeah. So it's like they fight for the most amount of money they can each get, and then they realize like they're both gonna get less by just fighting, and then they'll settle on something. I guess. Like they, that they lost enough money already just fighting with each other. Yeah. So that's that. Yeah. Another, let's talk about this. This has to do with money as well. I, I forgot I want to talk about this. Let's talk about Jeremy Lin. Okay. So a lot of people ask me what my thoughts on Jeremy Lin. He's no longer with the Knicks now. What do I think about this? So if people don't know, Jeremy Lin is a player that kind of came out of nowhere. He was waived last year by the Houston Rockets. They didn't play him. They just waived him. basically let him go. The Knicks picked him up. They did really well for the Knicks. And then he got injured, and then he missed the playoffs. So he basically had no contract. So now he, this summer he became a free agent, but he's a restricted free agent, meaning that if he signs a contract with someone else, if the Knicks match the offer, then he would have to go back to the Knicks, right? Wow, okay. Yeah. So the Houston Rockets, the team that waived them last year, they go, well, we want him back. Yeah. Because <laughs> wait a second, he's good, why we let him go? So they, they, figured, they offered him this three-year deal, and it's worth like $25 million over three years, right? But what they did is they kind of looked at the Knicks' financial, you know, situation. And what they did was they go, okay, for the for the first year you get five million, the second year you get five million, 
the last year, the third year, 15 million for that year. What? Just because that would screw the Knicks, because they pur- they purposely like kind of. So the Knicks couldn't beat the skip, the, uh, get them under the salary cap. Right. So the, basically, the Knicks would be over the salary cap for the third year of his contract, and the way it works is you can go over the salary cap, but they penalize you, and you have to basically pay double, uh, whatever amount you go over, you have to pay double that. So they have to pay like 30 million or something in fines. <laughs> just to have him. So they could have done. They could have done. I guess they thought about it and they decided that they're not going to bring him back. That's pretty much what happened. And he was, and he was going to the, the Rockets, and um, I feel like it was a mistake to let him go. There's a lot of people out there that are like, "Oh, he wasn't. He's that wasn't that good. He was a fluke player." Blah blah blah. Well, you know what? He's 22. At worst, he's a decent player. You know, at best, he's he's like a at best he's like a legendary player. At worst, he's like a decent player. You know, based on his performance. Yeah. So you let a 22-year-old player just go and leave, you know, for nothing. Basically, well, nothing in turn for him is walking away. And the way I look at it is like the, the third year you'd have a problem. We'll worry about it then. You know, maybe you could figure something out, a trade, or you can waive him or something. And that before that time, you know, and maybe he's going to play amazingly for two years, and then um, it's worth uh, spending the money. I don't know. I mean, you got to find out. You, you worry about later. Later happens. You know, that's how I look at it. I think it was a big mistake. A lot of people were really pissed off. A lot of people were saying that they're not they're no longer fans of the team and um, especially since his owner wasted so much money on bad players. Yeah. You know? And yeah, there's people that say, Oh, that you know, that contract that you'd be overpaying him for that contract, but how many guys are overpaid? So many guys are overpaid. A lot of guys are overpaid. It's just how it is, you know. Well, well I don't know, I'm bummed out. I'm not really uh, too excited about the upcoming season now and you know, we'll see how it goes, but I'm not I'm not very happy. <laughs> the whole thing. Don't worry, you've got the Brooklyn Nets now. No, I'm not uh I'm not a Nets fan, so <laughs> uh. That's that. All right. But anything about Jeremy Lynn, anything? I just gotta <laughs> wonder what's going through his head right now. Like he's gonna say, Oh, I'm very excited to go see the Houston to go to to go to Houston. I'm gonna miss my my uh friends back in New York, blah blah blah. blah. Meanwhile I wonder if he's like Thinking money, money, or man, come on, seriously. Well, that's the thing. A lot of people were like, uh, now there's reports saying that the Knicks owners like was like was upset that he, you know, would sign with them, and that's why he like didn't want to bring him back and blah blah blah. But I mean, uh, who knows what's going on? That's the name of the game. He's got to look out for himself. I mean, more than anything else, because you know the, the owner is going to look out for himself more than anyone else. Oh yeah, definitely. You know, when he makes his financial decisions, is he going to go, well, I wonder what Jeremy Lin thinks about this. <laughs> you know, he's going to do what he has to do. And, you know, Lin's got to do what he can do. So, I mean, kudos to him for, for making the most he can, you know. so That's our sports stuff. We did a lot of stuff. We, did, we talked movies, comics. Briefly sports about today. games. Games and, and sports, everything today. So now let's now do the comments. I'm rereading Dune. There, we got books in there. All right, there you go. All right. So comment time. Mm-hmm. All right. This one, this comment is, just want to congratulate all who are in the Stay Ballsy Intergalactic Video Network. Best luck to all of you. I'm going to do the impossible and subscribe to everyone on the network for support. This comment comes from Sir Maya the Bee. Sir Maya the Bee, we met at Too Many Games. Yeah, and for those of you who don't know, Maya the Bee was an amazing cartoon back on Nickelodeon back in the day. I'm terrified of bees, but I love that show. That and David the Mother's Day Gnome. You are terrified of bees. Let everyone know what happened the other day. No, I was with you. After filming, we were at a restaurant, and, well, we went over to, they, they brought us over to the table by the corner, and I saw something under the table, and it was moving around. I'm like, oh, my gosh, John, that's a bee. He's like, whatever, it's a fly. No, it's a bee. Like, I don't want to sit here. John's like, do you want to sit at the next table over? I said, yes, please. We moved over, and, like, the, the manager guy or something came over and said, is there something going on over here? I said, yeah, there's a bee over there. The guy walks over. He grabs a napkin or something, walks behind the table, captures the bee, brings it outside, and lets it go. Yes. Not only <laughs> did he capture the bee, he captured the bee without killing it he and let it life. safely outside. Yeah? That's hard. It's a lesson for you. Well, <laughs> anyway, back to the topic of the Steve Ball's Interlocking Video Network. 
uh, yeah, that'd be cool. I mean, uh, I hope everyone that's, uh, you know, checks out all the, the uh, channels that are part of the network, and that's kind of the idea behind it. So um, they're all in the description. You can click on a couple and uh, see what's going on, you know. Yeah, go like there's a lot of people out there that don't get, you know, don't get noticed. Perhaps they YouTube deserve to be stuff. noticed. I'm sure there's a lot. I'm sure there's, you know, thousands of, of people and uh, channels that, you know, no one no- notices and stuff, and there's really good stuff, so. Find them and make some friends. Yeah. So our, our next comment comes from Phillies fan 12368 Sometimes you got to take your belt off and do some damage. Yes, sir. That was one of my quotes from so, at some point I said this. I don't remember when. Yeah, it was a long time ago. I think it was like a, well, I was playing a game or something. But I always like when people remember that kind of stuff. It makes me feel good. Um, that um, one just came to me from a dark place. Yeah, because that reminds me of what somebody would do. That reminds me of, um, I'll be honest, this is going to sound horrible, but that just evokes images of beating a child. How's that? Because parents, fathers, like, back in the day for corporal punishment, would take off their leather belts and hit kids with them. Well, I was going in kind of a different direction. I know. It. I'm not trying to sell <laughs> your good name here, but that's just the image I got in my head. Well, there's different ways you can go with it. Um, I think it's a positive slogan about doing doing hard work and getting things done. All right. <laughs> so, anyway, on to the next comment. All right, I'll read this one then, or are you reading it? I'll read it. Okay. From Lil Nursy. OJ, if anything ever happens to my husband, I really hope it doesn't. But if it did, would it be okay if I put you on my short list of guys I would date? You would be in good company with Teller from Penn and Teller. And a friend of mine that actually looks a lot like you and has the same interest as you so much, so it's a bit weird. But you're adorable and cuddly, so would it be okay? What is your response? Well, you know, I think it's hilarious you put me up there with Teller because, first of all, Teller is awesome, and I'm honored to be on the same list as Teller. And the second thing is people keep telling me I look like Penn, so that makes me laugh. But, yeah, sure. Wait a minute. Maybe she, do you think maybe she meant Penn? I don't know. They're both wonderful Penn people. Gillette. Yeah, Penn Gillette. That's kind of interesting. I wonder if she meant Teller. Penn, of- Penn Gillette has a razor-sharp wit, by the way. Yeah, yeah. But uh, tell her to, not t- tell her not so much. No, tell her doesn't talk during the shows, but he is a really smart. I guy. think she probably met Penn because uh, she she also says her friend looks like you as well. Yeah, so. I'm, I'm sure your friend's really awesome too. But dude, okay. But I I just wish your husband the best, man. No, don't 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 worry about stuff like that. You guys are gonna be together and happy for a long you think time. This guy's gonna be upset with you now. He's gonna come for you. I hope not. I didn't do anything. <laughs> All right. Okay. Fair enough. It's, it's, take it as a compliment. All right. So, I guess we'll move on. Thank sure, you very much. Let's yeah. to you, so you decide. All right, all right. No, I'm good. Thanks a lot. And uh, let's hope that that doesn't ever have to happen because I don't want anything bad to happen to your husband. All right. So, moving on, we've got a comment here from the Camping Hypocrite. Mm-hmm. Hey, John and OJ. This is just a reminder that John has to go to Canada by 126, 2014. You said on the show 18 that you would, and OJ said to remind John if you were to forget, and I'm pretty sure you have forgotten by now, which is fine since it's been five months and two days. I haven't seen anyone else remind you, so I thought I would be the person to do it. Oh, uh, yeah, I'm still, uh, I've got some time there. It's a good amount of time, <laughs> it's a good amount of time right? Yeah, dude, I just I renewed my passport, to- so. You see, I could get there in what, nine-hour drive? Nah, shorter than that, dude. Oh, really? Well, think about it. From here to Rochester is about five or six. From Rochester Uh, to Niagara Falls is probably between one and two hours. So between six and eight hours. Not bad. Not bad at all. Plus, you can stop in Rochester for cake. That's why I love living here, man, because you get access to so many different areas within, like, you know, a decent amount of time. I can go to, you know, Boston, three, Philly, three. I go to another country in, in eight, apparently. <laughs> if you can get to Iceland in, what, five? Where? Iceland. Maybe it's a bit longer. Maybe it's an eight-hour flight. I don't remember. Oh, I'm talking about driving. All right, right, right. Well, you can get flying, to Mexico. You can fly from anywhere in a couple hours. You can you get mean? to Mexico in a long time. Well, Mexico is far. There's a lot of access to major places. 
what I'm trying to say. Do you agree oh, with this? Oh, yeah, definitely. Hey, you forgot Boston. Don't forget Boston. I said Boston. Boston. You said Boston? Okay. Say, yeah. Don't Chase. forget. All right. Yeah. I've been to Boston a long time. Oh, it's a nice city, man. I have gone several times, but it's been uh, probably a couple years at this point. we got to go up there for Fraps and, uh, yeah, Harvard Square. Anyway, some good stuff. Yeah. All right. All right. Um, our next comment comes from Steve-O Get Fit. The Rambogia needs a hand signal slash gesture. That way I can walk around and throw up the Rambogia signal and see if anyone living around me knows what it is. And if I don't, then I can kick him in the ball slash vagina and drag him to my home and make him watch the show on loop. There's a response to this underneath. Response from Juggernaut14578. At Steve-O Get Fit. Our hand signal such gesture could be each of our hands thumbs, index fing finger, and make a circle, then put them together and put them on top of your pants zipper next to crotch and scream, <laughs> I'm ballsy. Uh, yeah, I mean, I like when the, when the Rainbow Warrior members kind of figure things out amongst themselves and decide things, because um, it is a democracy and they should be able to, um, you know, choose their paths. Uh, I don't know if that's the proper signal, because in public this could be taken as a lewd gesture, yeah, you may yeah. be arrested, but that's up to your discretion. You can do it if you'd like. Uh, do you have any ideas for a hand gesture? I didn't even think of that. Consider this. Well, you could do the same thing, but put it, like, elsewhere so it's not, like, right over your crotch. Yeah. You could also... The first thing that popped into my head was the henshin a go, -go baby symbol from Beautiful You definitely do. Maybe, maybe you could come up with something. I don't know. It's something to consider. We should get the... Uh, Sign language for balls. Because we have balls. a way of dress, we have a way of speak, we have words and phrases, and you know, there should be possibly be movements as well. Yeah, oh gosh, I just, uh, I what just happened? had an image of Ramborgian interpretive dance. What is it? Uh, Ramborgian interpretive dance cannot be explained, you must experience it for yourself. Okay. Yeah. Sure. All right. Well, we have a comment here from Edman452. I'm going to add a little bit to the beginning. Well, this Sunday, 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 John Remu, Vendoje versus Chuck Norris and Bob Saget, the duel of the century. Who will win? I would point the Chuck Norris get involved in this. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe he found out I made a cake of him. My God. Now, you know, I don't know. I feel like we had the advantage over SAG, but now Norris is in there, and this is like... I mean... I, you're going to have to take Trick Norris. I'll, I'm taking SAG. It, so dude, well, to... you, the first thing I'm going to do is dress like uh, Steven Seagal to try and confuse him a little bit. Trick Norris? He doesn't even know who Seagal is. <laughs> Aren't they both in The Expendables too? Seagal's not. Really? I thought he was. No. Okay. Well, he should be. It's a, you know, John claude well, I thought they were both in it, man. I don't know if Seagal's in it. I mean, I well, Trick Norris is in it. Well, yes, I thought it was... I thought, fine, I, thought I had no idea it was Seagal. I did not hear that. I, I could be wrong. I don't know. I mean, we could check. But I mean... I would, I'd be amazed if he was. That'd be awesome. I mean, it's just... How are you supposed to stand up against that roundhouse kick? Like, I could understand Saget and Stamos, St Saget and Coulier, but Saget... I don't think Sagan and Norris would be aligned with each other. I think their beliefs are too different. You think so? I think they would not get along. I think that would be their downfall and their folly. If you think so. Then. If you spoke about the Expendables 2 in the trailer, they show Van Damme kicks Stallone. I was like, oh, that's great. <laughs> I was like, I got to see this now. Well, he does like a roundhouse kick to Stallone. I was like, holy shit. This is amazing. I, I don't think that. Yeah, you know, I think you're right. I guess Seagal's not in it. Yeah, I don't think he is. He's like the only one missing. That's kind of a shame. They probably don't like him. What? What? Why ever would that be? Seagal? They don't like him. No, I don't, I don't know. I'm just making stuff up. I I don't know. He's all, he's like the only guy. He's like the only guy that's not in it. I mean, they could go the only if they want to do like they could do like the next generation, like like The Rock. And um, you know, I don't know who else is out there, but the next some, generation. Well, like the the younger the younger action stars. Shia LaBeouf. Uh, wait, wait. You, what, did you just call Shia LaBeouf? Is, is he really an action star? No, he's not. Oh, in that case, I see what you did there. 
Well, yeah, Dwayne Johnson, he'd probably, you know, I don't know if they're going to make any more, but that's like only guys in, in like, there's just only a few guys are missing, really, so. There's a game coming out. Eh? There's a Expendables game. Oh my gosh, it has to be nothing but you running around with that grenade launching shotgun. It's, I think it's like four player if you want to do it with us. Yeah, dude, are you kidding? All right. There have been so many four player games y'all have done that I would totally play. Oh, you're always doing things. Well, let me know in advance, man. I will rot you in, and we will have some fun. All right, good. All right. Next up, Johns's. You guys have made my day. All right. Also, do you want me to do you want me to repeat who? Uh, okay. Right. Gotcha. Yeah, you said Johns's. You guys have made my day. I started this month with my girlfriend of six months. That's about five years of high school time. Breaking up with me. Then, supposed other friend of mine tried to blackmail me to go out with her because my mom and ex-girlfriend's mom didn't know we were dating. I watched the show. Seconds later, I sent, Hey, F you, I'm not your bleep. I'm coming clean. I won't be blackmailed. Lose my number. I feel much better, thank you. And holy carp? OJ replied to me on Twitter. OJ, you rock. Dude guy, 1354. What did you say to him? Uh, I gotta go check. That was, you don't know? It's been a while, man. Dude, every dude, everything I put in it, it, it's I just Twitter and I I just forget so many things. Um. Well, there was a response to this. It's oh, from Frankie three. And he says, "That's how my ex friends were. They were two faces and turned their backs on me just because I didn't agree with something they said. Even though now I don't have any friends, listening to the show is way better than talking with those guys." Ah. So. I'll tell you right now, you know, when I was in school, I didn't I really have any friends at all. I mean, um, I was friends with you mm -hmm. and uh, maybe like one other person, two other people maybe. But you were not my grade, so that's why that's why I said I never made any friends because like, I was friends with you, but I didn't really like, see you in, during the day at school. No, like almost never. I'd see you after school and stuff, so it didn't really matter um, that we were in the same school, really. <laughs> I mean, like occasionally I'd run into you maybe. Yeah, but not much. I mean, I almost never spoke with you at school because I'd never see you. And yeah, we had so a tiny I'm, school, so. Yeah, I was pretty much al alone. And, uh, you know, I would, I think when, it, when, you're, when things are like that, you got to kind of find things that make you happy and, and are positive to you and kind of build like a, a good a good world around you as much as you can. So there was things I would like, like to watch and listen to when I got home and that would make me feel better and, uh, you know, Kind of those those kind of became my friends in a lot of ways, like the the music I would listen to and the or the people on the radio would listen to. So if we could be that for you, then that's that's a cool thing, you know. We we just keep you hanging on till you uh you know find yeah, the I mean, people you're looking for. Yeah, exactly, and I think you just got to get through it. It's it's a cliche, but school goes fast. It does. And I mean, yeah, we're 18 and you're starting off. I mean, there's so much so much to do and and get involved in after that. So. Push through it. Don't let it destroy you. Because you got a long way to go. So I, I yep. think a lot of people, you can go the opposite direction with it and just be like, oh, you know, I hate my life and all that stuff. But No, nah, you don't want to go down that road, man. You just got to push through it, get through it, mm -hmm. get your diploma. And, and then when you're, once you're free and you, have your, you can travel places on your own and do things on your own, go to things you like, you know, whatever it is. And you find, you'll meet people that have similar interests, and it's going to be good. So, Do not fret, sirs. Do not exactly. fret. Exactly. And I found that. I found. I think I found the tweet. Okay. Um, it was that, well, dude guy had said, ah, best part of my day was listening to the show. Super special because Super John Rambo and Fresh O.J. Jason Pulp answered my question. To which I replied, best part of my day? Reading that someone's best part of their day was listening to the show. Oh, you're clever. You're a nice, you're a nice fellow, dude, guy. Yeah. So we got one more. What do you got here, sir? All right. A final comment for the evening, for the day, comes from LTD seventy three. Hey, John and OJ. Big smile emoticon. Will you guys ever do a twenty four hour version of the show? That'd be so cool. Haha. <laughs> I'm sure everyone in the Ramborgia will listen to it. I don't know if we do a 24-hour show. 
but I would love to do some kind of like, you know, 24 hour stream or something where we like have different content going. Yeah. Maybe and then, like raise like a, like a telethon or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. We'd raise money for something. I guess he was doing that. We'd have to take, we'd have to be conscious in shifts though, man. Oh, you'd have to like, you know, we'd be like, oh, here's Schnauzman whole punch episodes. <laughs> then we go to sleep. You know, like just, you know, just keep playing content, but that's what I definitely consider doing. I want to do like everything you could do with this kind of stuff. I want to do like a live show of some sort. Oh yeah, dude. I, we've talked about the sort of plans we'd love to do for that. Live audience is kind of interesting. Like after uh, too many games. <laughs> yeah. I didn't really think about how it was going to be, you know, like, and you did the whole thing, and then people clapped and, and laughed, and I was like, ah, oh, I kind of like that. Yeah. <laughs> so I'd love to do, like, a live show. I'd love to do, um, you know, a, a, a telethon of some sort, a crazy, like, you know, marathon type of thing. That would be fun. For the actual, you know, genre presents the show, I have, a, I have an idea of something I want to do in the next couple of weeks. <laughs> Thinking about doing something a little different. Um, so I don't know. Yeah, I, just, I think the idea is just to keep challenging ourselves, and we've done quite a bit. We've done the game stuff. We've done a podcast. We've done a, a web series. So uh, we're hitting all we're hitting all the uh, all the things. We're not, we're not at the right course. <laughs> yeah, we're basically we're we're, we're yeah we're we're basically sp- spreading a wide net. We're trying a bunch of different medium and a bunch of different things to see. I guess what fits best for us, huh? Yeah, I think so. Well, it's just fun too. Yeah, I mean, you try new stuff, you never get bored. It's all a good time, man. It is. And how. So, I think that's it. You got anything else you want to talk about? I think we've run the gamut, my friend. Yeah. We have. <laughs> so, next week, I don't know if you're going to be or not. I guess we'll figure it out, but... Yeah. I want to talk Batman. We'll be just a few days away from... Schnauzman, Whole Punch, episode number five. So, we'll talk about that maybe a little bit. Bye. Uh, we'll have our Stay Balls and T-shirts available. Shirts. They will be available at geekfiregifts.com slash shop, which we, actually, which we actually forgot to talk about earlier when we were talking about it. Earlier. Now you're being just obnoxious. Obnoxious. <laughs> OJ's lost his mind. We Never had here. one. Yeah. I know you got to uh, get some candles done. Oh, man, dude. I got to bake the parts from yesterday. I was so happy that I got that. I, I churned through it, man. I was going to go to bed. All right, one thing, man. Yeah, now you mentioned it. I was working on it like last night. I had a, I had a bunch of stuff to do. I had to, uh, I had to head to uh, the art store to get more candle jars, and that took forever. I got food, came home, ate it, and then I spent, you know, the whole night working on candles. And I was like, all right, I spent some time with John. We worked on some script stuff, planned out some things for uh, that we're gonna do, and then, I'm like, all right, well, I can either go to bed, play video games for a half hour. Or I can try and finish this last piece. And I buckled through it and I finished the dang last piece and I was super happy. And by the time I finally got to bed, it didn't matter anyway because I got paged for work at 1 a.m. <laughs> really? Yeah, I could have stayed up. That. that was awesome. Oh my God. Yeah, no, it was, it was all cool. It was all cool and stuff. You know, it wasn't a big deal, but it was like, man. The, but the hilarious thing was, I stayed up too late working on the candle. And then before I sleep, I like to read. So I was rereading Dune. And by the time I put the book down, it was maybe 12, 12.50, nah, about 12, 12.30, 12.45, and I couldn't get to sleep. Mm-hmm. Then we hit, one, we hit 1 o'clock. I'm still conscious. I'm like, oh, man, I hate this. I just can't get to sleep. And then the phone goes off. So I'm like, you know what? I'm glad this happened today. I wasn't going to get sleep anyway. This was good timing. Wow. Yeah. You got to do some monologues for me, man. What are you going to do this? Uh, I could do it tomorrow. I could... Do it today. I could do it Friday. You can do it today if you feel like doing this. Ah, man, I gotta bake. Co- I gotta bake candle parts for an hour, so whatever. All right. Well, I guess we'll figure it out. All right. So that's gonna do it for the show. The show. For OJ, for Cyber Demon, for Charles. Charles. This is John signing off. Thank you for listening and being part of Genre Presents, the best and free and optional. Entertainment, please stop whispering. What? <laughs>